is Mrs. Courtney Wilkerson from Speedway High School and four of her students and they're going to tell us about Sparky's Pantry. All right, hi guys. I am Courtney Wilkerson. Um, this is, these are my guys. Why don't you guys come on over here so everybody can see you. <clears throat> and we brought here, Henry, can you come over here? So we can see the, there we go. Here, why don't you go stand right over there so you can see the board. I have to stand here so I can move the slideshow. There you go, perfect. All right, and tonight I brought with me Henry Cronin. Can you raise your hand? There you go. And Brody Brock, is that you? No, I think that is you. <laughs> and hopefully, Saman Briseis, yes. And Wyatt Holt, and my right hand woman, Ms. Jolene Brutus, could not do half of this without her. But these are the guys that make up Sparky's Pantry. And our shirts say Sparky's Warriors because that's what we do. We are um, a group at the high school and we run a food pantry twice a month for any family who attends Speedway schools from the preschool all the way through the high school. Henry, what are we doing in this picture? That was Henry and Salmon. Yeah, what are you doing? We make boxes and we use our muscles and we heavy. Yes, they're moving the boxes and using their muscles because it's super heavy. So this is a delivery day from Gleaners. We get to partner with Gleaners Food Bank in Indianapolis. They provide us with a monthly ordering stipend so that we can stock the shelves. And when the food comes, they just leave it and the guys have to bring it all inside. Um, we order from their warehouse and it gets delivered once a month for us. And the, this is Henry and Saman. The orders come in on big pallets and the boys tear open everything and get it all loaded into our classroom. This is you. Brody, can you tell them what you're doing? What are you doing up there, Brody? Are you eating ice cream or are you putting stuff away? <laughs> Brody worked so hard to get our donations up on our shelves. Most of our wooden shelving was donated by a business here in Speedway that was liquidating. So we were able to um, acquire a lot of the shelving that we use that we need to store all of this food. Right, Brody? But then, this is a fully stocked pantry. This is what we like the pantry to look like. That's not what it looks like right now. <laughs> All these wire shelves were purchased um, with a grant and we were able to partner with the local Air Force recruiter and he brought in a group of recruits. We ordered pizza, <laughs> he brought in the recruits and they spent several hours building shelves for us. Stay out of their way, they all have the way to do it, and at the end of the night it was done, which was fantastic. This is me making boxes for the pantry on, so this is like Tuesday or Wednesday. And I usually make 10, then they'll start loading, then I'll continue making more and more boxes for them to pack up make around 50, 60 sometimes. Perfect. We do pre-pack in boxes so that the families that are coming to the food pantry aren't coming into the high school. We have boxes that are pre-packed with, we try to go for at least three complete meals and breakfast items. And then we also, um, and that, those are the things that get packed into these boxes. The important piece and that Wyatt does such a good job at is he knows when the boxes are going to be heavier or when they're not and he makes sure that everything gets double taped so that all the boxes hold for us because you all know that cardboard boxes don't always work quite the way you want them to. Saman, what's happening? Can you tell us what's going on in this picture? Um, you need a just be um, you need a help, anybody? 
You guys are helping. You're doing a great job. This is packing day. And when we pack for the food pantry, we set, we've finally perfected, mostly, an assembly line. And the boys, Wyatt starts the assembly line with the boxes that get, are being built. And then the, usually most of the boys start filling boxes from different stations at the table. It says like two vegetables, two fruits, spaghetti sauce, pasta, rice, beans. And they work their way down to the end of the line the last thing in our line is usually a couple of treats or maybe just an extra that we've been able to snag that we can add to the boxes. Then the boxes get folded. Not all of us are great folders. <laughs> so we always struggle, but then we're able to get the boxes packed and put onto shelves. And then they sit for about 24 hours because we have to pack on Wednesday so that we're ready to serve on a Thursday. This is packing day, or food pantry day, isn't it, Henry? Yeah. What are you doing? Uh, me, uh, they have food box right there. Because they are moving outside. Yep. Because we don't have anybody inside the building, we set up outside. Our maintenance department is gracious enough to give us the carport access. <laughs> On food pantry days, they move out their trucks so that we can have covered space because you'll see in a few minutes, um, we serve people rain or shine. We prefer the shine to the rain, but um, it is nice to have the food under cover so that if it does start to rain, all of our cardboard boxes don't get wet. We've done that. Um, and so, but we have to set up and tear down everything. So we set up eight folding tables, we move out the food for between 50 and 60 families, and then we have to be ready to serve it. So Henry and Brody here are moving out my boxes. Each box weighs about 30-ish pounds. A cart can hold six, five or six boxes. So they're pushing a couple hundred pounds of weight around um, as they get them all outside. So when they're tired after food pantry, Everybody knows why. Here's one of our setup shots, right, Brody? Is that you? <laughs> so we're set up to serve. We serve for two hours twice a month from 12.30 to 2.30. Um, we start, we open the gates right at 12.30 usually, right, Wyatt? Wyatt's, Wyatt's always my time. first person to help me get cars pulled up to the line because I can't be in two places and it, it's important that we get everybody to pull all the way up so that we can serve as many people at one time as we can. Um, but if you ever drive by the high school parking lot on a food pantry day, this is pretty much what you see. We're outside pushing carts. Everything in this cart is for one family of five. So that includes their food boxes. What else do we put in the carts? Um, uh, uh, body in the five people. Yes. Why? What else do we put in the carts? Uh, eggs, milk, meats, cheese. Sometimes. We partner with um, Rich Herger, who runs the storehouse food pantry in the town of Speedway off of Thirtieth Street. He is able to do a lot of local pickups for us. So when Kroger's calls and says, we have three pallets of food that we're gonna toss if nobody comes to get it, Rich and his volunteers go and pick it up and they parcel that stuff out between his food pantry and the one the boys and I run at the high school. That's how we're able to give out meat and bread and fresh produce. Um, like I said, Gleaners, we get an order from Gleaners once a month that doesn't always mean that we can hold produce for a month. So sometimes we have to stagger our produce with Rich and he'll pick up for us at Gleaners as well and bring it, just so that we're always giving out the freshest stuff we can. The boys and I have thrown away our fair share of bad produce. <laughs> just like when you go to the grocery store, right? Like you'll get a bag and you think all those apples look great and then 
you get home and the one at the bottom of the bag is mushy, we throw those away. Okay, but this is us ready to serve. I'm the one that checks the families in and then the boys come with the carts to load. This was just an overhead view of what our traffic pattern looks like. So if you're familiar with the high school at all, you know that the top of the screen is 25th Street. So we're pulling cars in, they're coming down the back of the parking lot, and they're pulling up and they're waiting here. This is kind of our loading zone, or our waiting zone. And then when Wyatt and I pull them in, we pull them in four cars at a time. We do it as safely as possible. We do all four cars, and then all four cars have to turn their engines off. That way we keep everyone safe while we do this. We don't want any accidents. We don't want anybody getting out of line. It just keeps me and the boys and our clients safer that way. Um, once all four cars are loaded, we'll send them on their way. But then that way we're working with four cars at a time. And usually for the first, what would you say? 30 minutes, we go pretty, pretty steady. It's four cars and four cars and four cars and four cars. We're constantly moving them, right? Henry, I think you're up again. I was, I mean, put your bags into the truck. Yep. We do all of the loading for the families. They don't get out of their cars. So the boys know. Samen, what do we do with the eggs? We don't want to break the eggs, that's right. We give eggs to the driver of the car. We say, here are your eggs. That way they don't accidentally get broken in the loading process. But we do, we load trunks, right? And back seats, yeah. sometimes front seats. Depends on how full the car gets. Samen, do you know who, who are you talking to in this picture? Um, this is Mr. Richard, and I'm sure some of you have met Mr. Richard. He's been a longtime Speedway person, um, retired from Allison's. He's been running the storehouse for almost 20 years, and he is truly a godsend. He has helped us considerably. When I don't know what donations we're going to have to figure out how to make a box work for people, Rich can come in and say, hey, this and this and this, and oh, perfect, we're good. Rich is also the one, um, like I said, who does a lot of our pickups for us. We could partner with several other agencies, but we don't have transportation. So um, he does the pickups for us in the town and brings donations to us. This is a picture some of you probably saw us at the pancake breakfast this year. Um, we rely solely on donations to stock our shelves. We're not funded. The, everything that you see on those shelves are things that we've been able to have donated or people have donated gift cards or a surplus of things so that we are able to feed the families that come through our line. Um, we couldn't do this at all without the town of Speedway's support. All four elementary schools in Speedway host a food drive each year. So there's one close to each of you, I know, um, but they host a food drive each year. Mrs. McGuire in the yellow at the back table is one of our homeschool advisors. She's the social worker who works at Allison Elementary. And they, do, they all do a fantastic job um, with those food drives. And then those food drives benefit us so that we can stock the shelves a little bit more. Um, we also get, we where the, the Lions Club invites us to come to the pancake breakfast, where we accept donations all morning long while you go get your breakfast. Um, and then the Methodist Church has been very helpful. They're, they have hosted several food drives for us. We usually try to do about three during the course of the calendar year. We, the last one, we, we did one in December or November. November, yes. Um, so truly, we couldn't do this without the community support from the town of Speedway. 
I think this one's going to be a little harder to see. Maybe not. Maybe it shows up better on there than it does on my black and white paper. But you can see this was just because we're open for school families. This is school kids helping school families. This is the breakdown of where those school, where the families are coming from. Right? 38% of our families that come come from Wheeler. 29% of our families come from Allison, followed by Fisher and Newby. And the high school and junior high are mixed in there because most of the people that come up to us from the high school also have younger siblings at one of the elementary schools. 5% of the people we serve are employee families. So we, we serve everybody associated with, if you are associated at all with our school, Speedway school family. We began three years ago, right? Henry, you've been here for the whole thing. Henry is the only one who's been there for all of it. But we opened our doors with our first food pantry on September 2021. I'm looking to Mrs. McGuire. Because this is 2021, 21, 22, 20, yes. I'm just making sure I've got my years right. That first year, we served 188 families. We served them multiple times, but we saw 188 unique families between September and May. This year, we still have one distribution left, and we've served over 450 unique families. So our numbers are growing. Um, like I said, that first year we served that 188 families, now we're at 450 families. Not all 450 come every month. We serve about 200 families a month, give or take. Um, and that's in two different distributions. We, like I said, we distribute on the first and the third Thursdays of every month. But that's just kind of a, a little overview to show you what the numbers are doing. We've held steady for the last two months. We, we didn't, we, we were on a pretty, good clip of growth with the number of people that we've served and we've leveled out um, which is working out we've we've got our sweet spot with our numbers and we know exactly how many boxes to pack and how much food to prepare so that our other big goal is that we don't want anything to go to waste so <laughs> it, the first year or so was a big juggle to make sure we had enough food but not extra that would be wasteful and I think we finally hit that finally hit that sweet spot we typically don't have sometimes we hold over eggs because they'll keep a little longer right so this year it's been 856 family units but like I said some of those families have come multiple times so there were 450 unique families the average is that each family comes 10 times during the course of the year. We're open for 10 months. We, we distribute 20 times because we distribute twice each month. And on average, just by playing with our numbers, each family that comes, comes to us about 10 times. Some families come every single time. They, they hit all 20. Some only come once or twice because they've just had a really rough month. And that's the way, but we do keep data for all of this. We keep data for, because of our partner with Gleaner, partnership with Gleaners. And we keep data just so that if anybody asks, we can show what, what school, what schools are we serving? How many times are families coming? Do you see the same people every time? Um, how big are the families that you serve? So if you ever have a question about the data or the numbers, Please ask me, I promise you, I can, I can pull it out of many, many, many spreadsheets. We serve regardless of the weather. <laughs> this was one of our, fa I think this was one of our favorite days. We got drenched. <laughs> we were soaked all the way down to our shoes. But everybody's still smiling. We really do enjoy the work that we do and the way that we're able to serve the town of Speedway. All right. 
I will give you a little more history about the pantry and how it started. But first, do you have any questions for the boys? I want to know how these fine young gentlemen qualify to be able to do this. How do you get to work at Spark in Sparky's pantry? Whose class do you have to be in? It was raining in that picture. Do you get to do this because you go to art class or do you get to do this because you work with Mrs. Wilkerson? Mrs. Wilkerson. That's right. So these boys are all in my class full time. And part of our class is a huge, this is actually gonna segue into what I was gonna talk about with the history of Sparky's Pantry. Part of a big portion of our class is focused on vocational training and getting ready for real job skills after high school. I'm sure you're all familiar with the, the state of Indiana has multiple ways you can earn a diploma and you, can, you have to qualify or do certain things. One of the biggest things we have to be able to do is we have to show almost six semesters of work <coughs> readiness skills. As you know, Speedway doesn't have transportation. We don't have buses. So it's not like we could really go working at a store very easily. We can't go, we can't hop on it, we can't call up a bus and say, take me to Kroger. So we were really struggling post pandemic with finding meaningful vocational work opportunities. Mrs. McGuire approached me as a homeschool advisor and said, hey, before the pandemic, Gleaners partnered with us and we did this thing called back sacks, meaning we, Gleaners would bring us food and we would stuff it in backpacks for kids who didn't have enough food to eat on the weekends. Like many of the other things that happened in COVID, they shut it down. And when we reopened after the closures, Gleaners shared with us they really wanted to move toward this model of a school-based pantry because they knew it was the kids who weren't getting enough to eat. It was the school families. What better way than to tie the relationship between the school who already has the relationship with the kids and providing the food pantry? Homeschool advisors have enough on their plates. Didn't think they could take on a school-based pantry. Mrs. McGuire knew I was really looking hard for job opportunities for us. Let's try. So we wrote a couple proposals, <laughs> went to several meetings with the, with the powers that be and got permission to open that first year. And it's just continued from there. And that's how, so that's how it started. The boys do stocking, ordering, loading, lots of loading, packing. What did we do last spring? When we took the bus, where did we end up? Do you remember what it was called? Midwest Food Bank. Midwest Food Bank is, serves the entire country when communities have natural disasters or a huge need. So we're talking thousands and thousands of meals need to be prepared. So, and they are staffed solely by volunteers. Gleaners has paid staff. Midwest is solely volunteers. We went in as a volunteer group and we worked at Midwest Food Bank for a whole day, helping them do some of the things. We were relabeling things and restocking stuff on shelves. They had gotten cans in from, wasn't it to spaghetti sauce? Yeah. But they didn't run, the labels didn't run correctly. So Hunts or Red Gold couldn't sell them. So they donated them to Midwest. Well, they get donated in those big number five cans, right, that are huge. They have no labels on them. Well, that's hard to use. So they printed the labels and the boys labeled all the cans. So that was a real, a real work experience then that we got to have. We also work on customer service, right, because we talk to our clients. We tell them every day, every time to have a nice day. Yeah, we do. We get to know their families and their kids. So we're, we're hitting 
all the boxes that are hopefully going to make us set up to be really good employees someday. Thank you. Any other questions for my guys? I do. What's your favorite part about food pantry, Saman? What do you like the best? Uh, the best, uh, roast beef, and then I'm um, very, very happy. It does make our, he, same as telling you that it, he likes it because it makes our families really happy. And it does. We, Speedway has the best people. We have the best families. The very, uh, green books. Th those are green choices. That's right. We make green choices because we help make people happy. We push our, push our grocery carts to them and they open their trunk and they are so happy to see us. So. I agree, Sam, and I think that's a really great part of Food Pantry. Brody, what's your favorite part of Food Pantry? Do you like packing the boxes? You do, you like packing the boxes? Yes, he broke a record last week when we packed boxes. He packed longer than anybody else. He packed for 65 straight minutes before he took a break. I was impressed. Yeah, that's for you, Brody. You did a really good job. All right, Henry. What's your favorite part about Food Pantry? Packing Food Pantry. Do you like packing the boxes or do you like seeing our customers? Customers. That's right. And do our customers like seeing you? Yeah. <laughs> I think they do. Wyatt, what's your favorite part? Uh, like loading uh, the cars and serving our customers. Yeah. And Wyatt is the one I can always count on to be when we have a difficult order. <laughs> Wyatt's the one who helps me keep it straight. And I don't mean difficult as in hard. I mean, sometimes families come and it's a bigger family than what we pack for. You know, we pack for five, but maybe they have nine people in their house. So then we have to do juggling and we get doubles of some things and triples of other things to make sure that we're giving a family of nine the equivalent amount of food that we're giving a family of five. What's been the weirdest thing we've ever given out? I think I know. Well, I think it was this last week. It wasn't really weird. It was just a lot. How many pounds of onions did we have last week? <laughs> 600. That's, in case you care, that's a lot of onions. A lot of onions. <laughs> onions, that's right. Do you have any questions for me about Sparky's or how it works or why it works? Do uh, the family sign up to come yes. in advance? They do, and I can show you, they do sign up because we only serve school families. We, it's kind of our vetting process to make sure that they are affiliated with the school. And it gives us the opportunity if they've signed up, maybe they used to go to Speedway and then they've moved out of district, but they knew we still had the food pantry so they thought, well, we'll sign up anyway. I can reach out to them and say, here are the food pantries that are local to you. You're not, you don't have anybody in our district anymore, so here's where you're living, and here are the food pantries that you can re reach out to. And yes, they sign up to give me, it helps me with my data, but they give me the kids' names, the number of people in the household. We used to have to collect veteran status. We don't anymore. But it also gives them a chance if there's something else, if there's a pressing need they can put that on that form and I get it and then I group them by school. So do, are they Allison kids? Are they Wheeler kids? Are they Fisher kids? Are they high school kids? And I have those social worker contacts each of the elementaries. So those social workers know which of their families are coming for the food pantry so they're on their radar. Like, hey, maybe I need to walk, maybe, maybe we need to make sure we've, we're helping this kid as much as we possibly can. I just say with where we're at today in this world that with Brody being my stepson, 
that I just got to say a big kudos and thank you to all of your staff for what you do. Well, I you for this community and you deserve it. Oh, thank you. We really do like what we do. It's, we're, fu we're tired. I don't, if anybody comes to our room on Thursday after food pantry, it's almost silent. Everybody's going. Sometimes we get really, really cold. A couple weeks ago on a food pantry day, a random day. I mean, it was supposed to be spring, people. And it was not spring. It was snowing and raining and like 36 degrees. And we were pretty miserable. And out of nowhere, my best friend showed up and she'd gone to Starbucks and ordered hot chocolate for all the boys. So we do have small angels like that that just show up and make those hard days worth it. And then it's over and then we get beautiful weather like we had last week. Did you have a question for me, Kelly? Yeah, how can we donate? <clears throat> we are always taking dry non-perishables, pasta, rice, dry beans, canned fruit, canned vegetables. Those are staples for our shelves those fill bellies. If you would prefer to make a monetary donation, gift cards are the best way to make that happen. Um, Mr. Richard helps a lot with those donations that come that way. We also um, have partnered with Anthem Blue Cross and Blue Shield reached out to us and said, hey, we do a month of giving in November. We want to use you, the pantry, as our designated give e yeah. i don't know send us a list of what you want so i prepared an amazon wish list of things and then their employees across the state were sending us stuff i mean how many boxes did we end up with from amazon like a million <laughs> right like every day the custodians would bring us like a tower of boxes and they were sending us pasta and toothbrushes and deodorant and hygiene supplies and stuff like that, right? So that's, an, that's another way people donate. If you're, there are several businesses here in Speedway that have called me and said, hey, we choose a different charity each month to support with our extra. We'd like to donate money to you. Um, a, woman I, a, woman pa a woman in Speedway passed away last year and her daughter, had heard about us and in lieu of flowers, she asked for donations to Sparky's Pantry. Um, so there are, there are so many ways that you can do that. Keep an eye out for those food drives that come through, you know, to the schools or to the church, you know, that are local, the pancake breakfast. Reach out to me, I'm happy to, sub I'm, I'm happy to send you either our Amazon wish list, which we just try to keep updated with those staples, because on Amazon it's real easy, you can send me 10 pounds of rice with free shipping. Um, <laughs> um, and that kind of thing, because those are the things that help keep our shelves stocked. We're able to order produce at no cost from Gleaners. Glean, that's a promise that Gleaners made in the last, they've got a new president CEO and that was his mandate, was that we were going to provide milk, eggs, and produce at no cost to food pantries. It costs gleaners, gleaners has to buy them, but they make them available to the food pantries that they serve at no cost. Um, so that's fantastic, that's a great way because we are trying to fill bellies with quality ingredients. We wanna give people good whole food that will help them eat healthy and fill their bellies for n not very much money. And if this helps fill, you know, if this takes off some of the pressure, then maybe the little money they still have left over can go toward a bill or toward getting a more reliable transportation so that a job is a possibility. Or, you know, maybe it'll go toward buying more of that meat at the grocery store because they've got growing boys and the boys like to eat it all. Um, so we're, we are, thrilled with what we're able to provide and it's been a mir it's been a miracle several times over when I've Michelle Michelle and Dawn both know where I'm like I don't know what we're going to put in these boxes we don't have enough and then somebody calls me and says here's a thousand dollars or I get a mysterious donor that just shows up with like 60 boxes of cereal 
I mean, it's, it's, it's truly miraculous the way it's been. Are you my cereal queen? No. <laughs> I'd love to thank you if you were. So but how, how would we donate items to the people? You would contact me at the school, and we could make arrangements um, for you to drop them off to me at the school. The boys and I, we've got grocery carts, man. I think we've got six. And we can all push one, and we can load real quick. Right? We've got our grocery carts. Right. Yeah? They've all, all got labels on them. Don't worry, they were all abandoned. And we made sure they were very well abandoned before they got donated to us. But that's probably the best way. You can reach me at the high school at 317-244-7238. My extension is 10155. And again, my name is Courtney. Wilkerson. Or if you just say, I've got donations for, Spank for Sparkies, they know where to send it. <laughs> now, if I were on Amazon, I would put in Sparky's Pantry. Yes, that's, that's, that's what my, I think that's how I have my wish list set up, is it says Sparky's Pantry. And it is public so that people can see it. And if you could search for it, you can grab it. I just got lucky that there was no, nobody else named Sparky's on, <laughs> on the Amazon wish list. All right, I think that's going to do it for tonight for you guys. All right, thank well, you so thank much. you so much for having us. We are so <laughs> grateful.